Hello everyone, I am Chetna Belgere. Welcome to South First. Today, we're discussing a critical and complex medical condition, multi-organ failure. This condition occurs when two or more vital organs in the body start to fail simultaneously, posing a severe threat to a patient's life. To speak about this, we are joined by a leading expert in multi-organ transplant surgery, Dr. Suresh Raghavaya of Glen Eagles BGS Hospital in Bengaluru. With expertise of handling complex cases involving multi-organ failure and transplants, we look forward to exploring the complexities of multi-organ failure and potential solutions to it as well. We welcome to the show, Doctor. Uh, first of all, sir, what is multi-organ failure? So, as we know, we have our body is made up of multiple organ systems. We have the nervous system, which controls the brain and the spinal cord with all the nerves. Then we have the circulatory system, which is the heart and the blood vessels. We have the respiratory systems, which is helping us breathe and exchange oxygen to the body. We have the digestive system, where we are eating and excreting, uh, absorbing all the nutrients and excreting. And we have the integumentary system, your hands, limbs and skin and everything. So all of these systems have different functions, play their own role to keep us healthy. Now, when two of these organ systems, let it be brain and circulatory system, or let it be circulatory system or respiratory system, or let it be circulatory system and the excretory system. So when two or more of these organ systems fail, we generally call them as multi-organ failure system. And these organ systems can fail in any random combinations. Like CNS can fail along with circulatory system or circulatory system can fail with respiratory system. Respiratory phase system may fail with excretory system. So any various permutation and combinations, these things can fail. And usually when more than two of them fail, we call them as multi-organ dysfunction syndrome. And generally when more than two fail, they are like dominoes. One by one, one by one, one by one, more system failures will follow. And generally that will lead to death of the patient. So this is what we call as multi-organ dysfunction syndrome. Okay. So, uh, is it that the reporting of these things have gone up or uh, because I mean, I'm noticing a lot of these crowdfunding platforms are actually showing a lot of cases of, I mean, request for money to ha uh, handle this multi-organ failure cases. So, are we yeah. seeing an increase in these cases, first of all? So, definitely with the improvement of healthcare facilities, which are available to the general public right now, Definitely the diagnosis has increased, first of all, because most in the olden days, what would happen is see, you want what you need to uh, realize is once the patient has entered multi-organ dysfunction syndrome, the chances of surviving is very low. Okay. So in the olden days, what used to happen is even if the patient had multi-organ dysfunction, he would just die. You know, he would not come to a tertiary care or a quaternary care center, or he will not get advanced healthcare facilities for him to actually have a chance to survive this condition. But now what has happened, healthcare is available far and wide in India right now. Even the smaller villages are able to manage some amount of organ dysfunction. So what happens is it is getting diagnosed more and the treatment is actually increasing so that the patient has a likelihood of beating this okay. multi-organ dysfunction syndrome. But the reason why you're seeing it more and more on crowdfunding platforms is, yes, it is going to be very expensive to salvage these patients and that is why they get to see them more and more on crowdfunding platforms. So in a way, yes, they are getting diagnosed more because the healthcare facilities have improved and there is a chance. The medical science has actually um, advanced far enough right now that we're able to salvage a lot of these patients. If at all, they get treatment at the correct time. Okay. So is there an age group that we actually see? Is there an age group that we can say that, you know, it is this other than the usual old age thing, other than that mm -hmm. is there an age group that you are seeing now? With so one thing we need to understand about multi-organ dysfunction is, like I told you, it can happen in many permutations and combinations, but you need to figure out what is the role cause, what is the primary cause of this multi-organ dysfunction syndrome. In most people, you've talked about old age people, right? So in most old people, it is because of infection. Now, let us say a patient is diabetic or a hypertensive or whatnot patient has a diabetic foot or his foot became infected. So generally in younger people whose immunity is working very well, they have a high chance that the infection will be controlled and it will not spread to the uh, circulation and affect other parts of the body. But in an old diabetic patient, what happens? His immunity is low and generally the amount of care he takes for the diabetic foot is very less. So then what happens? The infection suddenly spreads all over the body. His kidneys will start to fail. His breathing will get affected his BP will start to fall down and then he enters the multi-organ dysfunction syndrome. So generally infection 
he is the main precursor for this whereas in young people let us say patient has a major accident and he lost a lot of blood so what happens the brain did not get enough blood supply until that time the kidneys did not get enough blood supply because the pp was low then what happens he develops cns failure or he develops kidney failure and in that sense he will develop a multi organ dysfunction syndrome so no age is exempt from developing multi organ dysfunction syndrome but if you look at the age wise uh, categories of what prompted this multi organ dysfunction the cause of it varies oh. depending upon the age okay yeah. so uh, when you are saying that you know it's a combination of different organs like more than two is what we are talking about so is there any deadly combination kind of thing you know is it something like okay if it's a liver and kidney then it's bad if it is some is there any combination okay. like that well nothing like that see one thing we can talk about is what are the reversible organs which are the organ failures yes. which are reversible now okay. let us say a kidney has undergone a little bit of injury now the patient can be put on dialysis tied over the crisis and then hopefully the kidney will recover okay. now same thing with the liver the liver has amazing regenerating potential let's say the patient is in liver failure if you are able to support the patient for about 5 to 7 days the liver will regenerate and come back now let us say the patient had a massive heart attack and is in cardiac failure we are doing an angiogram putting a stent getting the heart to beat again the patient will come back but let's say it's a massive massive stroke in the brain okay and there is no way that the brain can regenerate so then obviously the results are very poor but here yeah, when you talk about multi organ dysfunction there is no really one or two combinations every combination is there and that is why multi organ dysfunction syndrome is you seeing so much on social media right now because the results of their survival are very very poor okay so this also brings us to the challenges of you know the uh, and the complexities of the surgery itself you are a multi organ transplant surgeon so right. you know, what are some right. of the complexities if you could explain that so right now i think the maximum number of multi organ transplant i have done is liver and kidney together followed by kidney and pancreas together okay. so normally when we talk about the liver liver is like the power house of the cell it's the engine of the vehicle so whatever you eat gets digested by your stomach and intestines but all the nutrients in the food gets absorbed by the liver and it is converted to uh, energy so in for all practical purposes you can consider it as an engine you put petrol to your vehicle what converts the petrol to energy it's your engine so that's exactly what the liver is doing and once the liver fails your energy production decreases so why do we need energy for every single activity which your body does you need energy including blinking of your eyes breathing for your heart to beat you need energy and you can imagine if the engine is not working energy is not getting supplied so what happens once the liver fails one by one one by one the organ system starts failing if you don't manage the liver failure but so usually the first organ which follows a liver failure is usually a kidney failure the creatinine will start to increase they start putting on lot of fluid in their belly their legs will swell up and the kidneys will start to fail and because there is so much fluid in the body next the heart starts to fail because it's not able to pump so much of water over there then because the liver is also uh, important for your immunity the immunity of the patient falls down he becomes more and more susceptible to infections then because the water is surrounding all your intestines bacteria from the intestines come out into the water so one by one one by one the dominoes start to fail so definitely liver failure i would say is one of the most critical aspects of the body and you know once the kidney liver itself when you want to transplant a liver itself it's a major major surgery with lots of complications and add on to that when the kidney fails the complexity just multiplies exponentially because all the rest of the other systems also are uh, involved okay so when you're looking at the complexities the i feel the first challenge is to uh, is the availability of the organ you know you have yes. there is a lot yes. of huge queue uh, in terms of absolutely uh, there is very little organ donation that happens as yeah. well. so uh, so how about that so it is very unfortunate right now that the organ demand of far outweighs the supply of organs right now we have huge waiting periods even in karnataka per se i think there are more than 6000 patients right now waiting for a kidney and more than about 800 people waiting for a liver and this is because the knowledge about organ donation is still not very well permeated among our society right now although the government of karnataka is taking a lot of steps including the government of india the central government you know honorable prime minister always talks about organ donation right now which is very very commendable that he is spreading knowledge about organ donation and the knowledge about organ donation has definitely increased but yes 
the number of donations are very very less as compared to the west for example the us or spain we are easily one tenth or one hundredth of the organ donation rates over there and this is one of the primary reasons why people do end up dying once they develop organ failure like without a liver if the liver is in failure the patient might survive anywhere between 3 to 6 months if it's only the kidney failure they can survive on dialysis it won't be a problem but once the liver fails unfortunately what happens is they need a organ transplant uh, for them to survive and definitely yes this is one of the major major roadblocks we have in saving patients who come with liver failure the work around is yes somebody from the family can come forward to donate and we have done two living donors where the mother donated the um, liver and the son donated the kidney so we have done that as well so where two donors come forward to donate their organs or sometimes one patient we i remember still remember we did the liver transplant from the wife then i think about 8 months later she came forward and donated the kidney also so that thing is also possible but yeah again you know this can be done if the patient is fairly stable enough like when the patient is very sick you know you want both the organs to be put in at the same time and that is a huge challenge for us right now the availability of organs so that is why one of the things i would request all your viewers to do is split yourself as organ donors so that after death your organs will not go to waste and go ahead and save about 8 to 10 lives after their death yes so uh, when it comes to metabolic health i mean there is a lot of discussion happening and majority of the diseases these days we see is because of the metabolic health failure you know we are not focusing on that yes. at all so how much of a role does metabolic diseases and metabolic health plays in this uh, multi organ failures so i can speak from personal experience so i've been in liver transplant right now for about uh, 15 years to 16 years right now so when i initially started my career for liver transplant about 50 to 60% of what i used to transplant was alcoholic liver disease and hepatitis b hepatitis c whereas what we call fatty liver disease or what we call right now steatotic liver disease was less than i would say about 20 to 30% now within the past 6 years 7 years what i've noticed is it's an entire shift of the number of patients coming to me seeking transplant in the sense more than 50 to 60% of them are because of fatty liver disease right now So you can imagine there's a monumental shift in the amount of metabolic liver disease which is being diagnosed right now and this i think is purely attributable to lack of physical activity you know i remember growing up you know i was always outside the house my mom used to call me late in the evening to come back you know come with home for dinner but i see my kids they're always inside the house they're never outside the house so if you look at your it professionals it's a desk job morning 8 o'clock to evening 9 o'clock they're sitting in front of a desk and the access to food is very much right now and it is not healthy food it is high calorie high fatty easy diet right now what we call fast food so it's a two prong thing you have access to diet where people are eating and drinking because it is very accessible and cheap and at the same time they're not exercising much so what is happening to all these extra calories you are taking in it is getting stored in the body as fat and it is affecting the liver as fatty liver disease and that is why right now recently they changed the term as well metabolic associated metabolic associated steatotic liver disease so this fatty liver what we call in general term is accumulating within the liver and causing permanent liver damage to the point where they are coming in for transplant so yes it is a huge problem right now the metabolic associated liver disease so once you get into liver failure it's need, it need not always be an infection that would lead to multi organ failure isn't it absolutely so that's what i said so like they said the liver is the power house of the body right so need not be an infection at all just because it they are not producing enough energy and enough nutrients are not getting absorbed it affects all other organ systems continuously the kidney start to fail the heart starts to fail there's lots of blisters over the skin and the there'll be lot of oozing of fluid from around the this one that nutrition fails their gut microbiota changes once you get into liver failure their confusion starts to happen so that what we call a cns failure the blood will stop to clot because their inr increases their platelets come so it need not be an infection at all although most of the times an infection precipitates the multi organ failure so they will be very stable with medications and everything once they develop any stress the liver is not able to cope with the stress and most important stress which the body undergoes is an infection sudden infection which comes and suddenly they get into multi organ failure
Okay. So uh, when we spoke about organ donation as such, organ preservation also becomes very important. So is there yes. any technology or anything new that has come up where we can preserve uh, multi-organs? So that's a lovely question, uh, Chetna. So during my training and my past, what about 10 years, what we used to do is we used to take the organ from a cadaver. Whenever the body, somebody donates, we used to take the organ from the cadaver. We used to rinse it with preservative solution and store it in ice. Okay. okay, and then transport the liver to wherever we want to do the transplant and do the transplant. Now, when it comes to a liver, it could be stored in ice for a maximum of about 8 to 10 hours. So, within about 8 to 10 hours, you need to take the liver and you need to put it to the body and give it blood supply. Otherwise, what happens is the functioning of the liver decreases. Now, when you look at the kidney, you get about 12 to 14 hours time. In the sense, you need to transplant the kidney within 12 to 20, uh, 14 hours. Otherwise, the results, I mean, it's not saying that the liver might not work a higher chance that it will not work. Okay. So that is what we used to call a static cold storage. Now, the first improvement came when the pumps came. So we have something called as pumps. The initial bit, we got it for kidneys. So we used to take the kidney, we used to connect the artery to a small pump and it used to circulate this cold preservative solution into the kidney. So with this, we could actually preserve the kidney for up to 24 hours and then transplant the kidney. Now, the advantage of this is we could get the patient prepped up nicely. We would see how the kidney is functioning. And then we were able to transplant the kidney. Now, we extrapolated that technology to the liver as well, where we started flushing it with cold preservative solution. And you could potentially transplant the liver about 16 to 18 hours later. So now we have what is known as normothermic perfusion machines, where we do not put ice at all. What we do, we take the liver, put it in a machine, and we pump blood into the liver. So we oxygenate, there's a machine which oxygenates the blood and we pump the uh, liver with nutrients. And with this, what has happened is we can transplant the liver 24 hours, 36 hours, or even 48 hours later, you can transplant this liver and the liver functions. Oh, okay. Now, where's the big advantage in this? Now, let us say the donor is very, very far. The pay, you know, the donor, let's say, is about 8 hours, 10 hours, 12 hours away by road. By the time you go get the liver and come and put the liver over here, it will easily be 12 to 24, 12 to 16 hours. And the liver might not function properly. But here what happens, we put the patient's liver on pump. We transport it. We keep it over here. One more biggest advantage is we can measure if the liver is working or not when the liver is on the pump. So we can do the blood test from the liver, see if the liver is functioning well, whether the acid level is coming down, whether the lactate level is coming down, whether the glucose level is normal. And once we are convinced that this liver is functioning, then we can transplant it onto the patient. Okay. Otherwise, initially what would happen, we would, it was a Hail Mary. We would pray to God and say, okay, I hope this liver works and we put it into the patient. And if it works, good for the patient. But now we are very much able to salvage a lot of marginal livers, older livers, livers with lots of fat or a liver which is got from out of town where there's a long time where we had to transplant and everything. We're able to salvage a lot of livers because of this pump technology and the, you know, the future is very, very bright for organ transplant that way. Is there any role that the government hospitals can, or the government itself can actually play in you know, facilitating this multi-organ uh, you know, surgery, so transplant surgery? Definitely, they are on the right track right now with respect to increasing awareness for organ donation. You know, the most important uh, reason why patients fail is because of organ failure. And I would suggest promoting organ donation helps a lot because that will cut down the waiting time which the patient waits for an organ by a whole lot. Along with that, they are, you know, instituting dialysis centers all across Karnataka and they're all the district hospitals. So hopefully the quality will be maintained. You know, the problem with the government sector is they just the missionary and everything is available. But if the quality and you know, is not maintained, Patients do get into a lot of trouble with respect to, you know, infections or, in, uh, you know, inadequate dialysis or everything. And I'm proud to say that I'm associated with the IGOT, which is a government center over here for doing liver transplants. And we have done about 16 liver transplants in the government sector right now successfully. So, you know, the government has, have, is playing a very important role and a very encouraging role in promoting organ transplant. But access to healthcare still is a very far dream for everybody all the primary healthcare and secondary level healthcare is available when it requires tertiary healthcare like in the case of multi organ dysfunction syndrome it is still the private hospitals which are playing a much more bigger role than the government sectors and hopefully going forward we will have a lot more uh, facilities which will be 
qualified enough and uh, furnished enough to deal with multi organ failure patients that is all from me uh, dr suresh is there anything that you want to add to this interview i mean like i said most important thing is all of our patients are dying because of lack of organs you know please all the viewers i would suggest to go sign up to be an organ donor it helps a lot of people like i said there's a very famous saying don't take your organs to heaven heaven knows we need them over here so please sign up to be an organ donor and uh, we are a very comprehensive multi organ transplant team over here at clinical speeds hospitals we do liver kidney pancreas and small bowel transplants and we also deal with much much uh, advanced liver cancers pancreas cancers gallbladder cancers and we are very adept at treating all these cancers and please feel free to contact us in case you need any help regarding your health thank you so much chetna it was such a pleasure thank you dr suresh it was wonderful speaking to you thank you